for my next project, I am going to make a butcher block style countertop for my kitchen. First, I'm gonna start with a little 12 and a half by 33, two of them. Uh, they go on either side of my stove. Then depending on how that works out, I will build my actual countertops, which are 25 inches by uh, like five and a half foot, two of those in an L. So I have some cherry here, I have some maple, and I have some mahogany to add a little bit of darkness to it. I actually have two pieces of cherry. All together, these boards cost about $90. So we'll see how far I get with uh, these boards. The first thing I have to do is cut my wood into manageable strips because I need to get a straight edge on all the boards and none of them have straight edges. They're like a rough sawn lumber. So I don't want to deal with this eight to 10 foot size piece. So since I need 33 inches of wood for my countertop, I'm going to cut it into 35 inches because on that last inch, I'm going to be putting a nail for my guide board. My guide board will allow me to cut a straight edge onto these. So I'm going to cut them into 35 inches. Plug the saw in. Slightly wide, I need to flip it over. So there's my 35 inch board that I will work on my table saw to get a straight edge, and I'm going to do that with all my boards. Getting more into this, you start talking about blades and researching about blades. One blade does not do everything, though we try to use an all-purpose blade for most of our work. Since I'm getting more detailed work with cutting boards, I found that there is a special rip blade. And the one I got was 24 teeth. They say I think between 20 and 30 teeth, maybe even up to 40 teeth for a 10 inch blade. And then for cross cutting, using a 60 tooth blade. Uh, more of a general purpose. One said 60 or is either 80 or 90. So more teeth for cross cutting to get it smoother. And the 24 teeth, fewer teeth, so it gets through the wood easier, I think. So. I am ready to rip a straight edge on this board. I have my new 24 tooth ripping blade in. I have a guide piece of wood, which is which is prefab, so it has a nice straight edge on it. I screwed it in at both ends, and I set up my guide so that I'll be taking a little bit of wood off and get a nice straight edge to work from. So there is my nice straight edge piece to work from. Remember I said I wanted 33 inches of board for my countertop. That actually gives me about an inch, inch and a half extra uh, for play. And I cut these to 35 because I was going to put a nail in the end. And I need to cut that nail hole off because I don't want nail holes in my board. So I just got to make find a nice spot of 33 inches cut those off and these, those little end pieces I might can glue together and make some toy cars um, so that's what I got to do now about 
33 inches. Here is my wood cut to 33 inch strips. I have my mahogany, my maple. That top one's cut into the 20 and 13 because there's a, a blemish in the middle. So I did like that. And then my cherry. Now, this is what's left over from the 35s, from, from cutting them up into the right size pieces. So that will be used for something. The next step is now that I got my 33 inch piece of wood is to rip them into strips. I'm gonna go with basically one inch strips. It's gonna be just over one inch, like one and a sixteenth. I need to get better at ripping my strips because as you see at the top, that's the beginning of the strip where I was first putting it into the uh, table saw, that there's this gap. And it's really pronounced up here for about an inch or two, and then it goes away. So something with how I'm ripping it is creating this thing maybe I'm putting it in at an angle and that's smooth so I got to work on that the way I'm going to fix that is now I'm going to send these through a planer to get two nice parallel even edges which is good that I started with a little bit more than an inch because now I'm going to take off a little bit so this is what I decided to do about planing these nice and even is I'm going to put it through all them uh, at just about one and one eighth, just above there, and send them all through, get them all. Then I'm gonna drop it down to 30 second, and send them all through, and then drop down another 30 second. And I'm gonna do that four times. Half a turn on mine is one thirty second. Um, so I'm gonna take off an eighth, and that should get them parallel. And if it's not, then I'll do another little bit, maybe a th another 30 second, or a 64th. No need to video all that going through there. As you can see here, after planing them, I planed one side, one edge, one, one side here. And I sent it through a couple times without you ever taking anything off just to get to where everything's at a nice zero point kind of thing. And then I did a couple more times at a 1 32nd, 1 32nd, then did 1 64th just to go slower. Um, and as you can see, we don't have any gaps, nice edges here. So those are gonna be good to put together. Now, for some reason, a couple pieces of my maple had some problems that it was ripping like that. It was, I don't know why it was planing like that. You know, the edge I've heard sometimes of doing rip out, but I have not had that before and it didn't happen at any of the other pieces. So it was kind of strange. Um, I ended up putting all the maple through one at a time uh, I was putting them through in groups like five. So I'm going to have to go get some more maple probably so I can have enough maple in this. But that's what's happened after planing. Here's where I am at right now. My wood is cut into 13s and 20s. Uh, it's plain to the same thickness, side to side in this case. Um, that is the wood that I need to make two 12 and a half by 33 long boards, which would be my countertops next to my stove. Now that's only half of the wood that I had actually all went through and cut up. Uh, I was gonna have to cut up that wood anyways and get it all planed in that because I'm gonna make other countertops 
these are just my first ones I'm starting with. I'm also going to make other cutting boards, and all this wood is for that. So going through and dealing with all the other wood is fine. Um, so next is to arrange it in a randomized pattern and then glue it together. Here we are, all glued up. I didn't want to try and film it as I glued it. It's just putting glue on top, squeezes it together. You can see how it's put together afterwards. So you can never have too many clamps. That is a new thing. So I was trying to clamp from multiple ways. I was trying to clamp together uh, this way because of some, so there's some bow in some of the wood. I actually missed on one of the spots that I really needed to. So it's wood going across and some wax paper because of the glue. Taking all this off. I've got a couple little, couple. I know one bridge I missed over here, but. So we were clamping that direction. Trying to get these all nice together. And we were going side to side, which is the main way you're going to to clamp things. And I also I put some strips on some extra strips on the outside to uh, protect the wood I was working with. Now hopefully those didn't get glued together. But we'll find out here. Clamps kind of got a little glued on there. That was interesting. I thought that was part of what they weren't supposed to. So that's why I'm worried about my trying to do my big countertops. Do I have enough clamps or do I gotta go buy more clamps? So there's those side strips that were put together. I also did some from the each end. Just to make try to make sure that these that the connect that the seams in here went together. Now well, that one actually stuck to it. Which is okay, because I need to cut this with a uh, saw anyways. So here we go. Oh, and I have wax paper underneath here. And I've got it on a surface. And I could have just put it on the, on the counter, on the tabletop. Um, but I was trying to still, again, trying to squeeze down the top. So, here we go, my board. So now we gotta put it in the planer. Going to start planing this. I've got my planer set at height. I know this is gonna go through without cutting anything. That's what I wanna do at least one time. And then I'll start bringing it down by a 16th um, to just start trimming, then when I finally get one side to look good, uh, flip it over, do the other side a couple sixteenths. I've got an outflow board set up to catch this because I'm only one person and I don't want this to drop off the end. So I'll just put it through once, once with you and then I'll get it at the end. It just fits through the width. It's a 12 and a half inch wide planer. This is 12 and a quarter. So. That was my first concern. <laughs> So we see it goes through okay. Now I'm going to start bringing it down and actually planing. This is what we have after a few minutes of planing, just going down by a sixteenth of an inch, or sixty-fourth of an inch, one sixty-fourth of an inch every time, just getting a little, little. Nice and smooth. Now the next step is to, do, is to sand a whole bunch, trim the edge that I don't want, and uh, then oil some stuff. I'm ready to glue up my second small countertop. I'm going to try this one a little different. 
I saw someone do this, so I thought I'd go for it too. I just put plastic down on my bench top, uh, like painters, but not real thin painters plastic, uh, but stuff I would use for drop cloth. I'm going with that. But now I'm going to go with four top down uh, sets of ice grips, one at both ends, and then going at the seams for the other two to try and get these, make work on these a little bit more. And then, of course, I've got all the side to side clamps. So we will do this. Putting it down on plastic worked fine. Uh, the plastic's pretty much now reusable. It just came right up. Uh, there is, there's obviously some glue on the back side, so it just didn't stick to the plastic. Whereas the wax paper, it's being so flimsy, kind of you throw away almost every time. So that worked out okay. And I think I was a little bit better at getting some of the bow down. Can always get better at that. But again, we're gonna plane that out of things and get it all nice down the level next. Here's how the boards will, be, will look. On the left is a board that has been planed. And on the right, the board has been planed, sanded, and has three coats of oil. All that's left for the one on the right is a uh, butcher block conditioner. Now, as I said, the final step in the process is oiling the boards. So I bought a nice gallon of mineral oil because it's going to take more than my little where these 12 ounce bottles. So just pour it on, move it around, get it all covered. It's a clear, it's fine, because we're gonna let it soak in. This other board has been done with um, three coats of oil, and now it needs some butcher block conditioner, which is really just mineral oil with some beeswax in it. So again, get it on there, move it around, use a rag if you want, and none of this stuff is hazardous to us, so getting on your skin is not a problem. I'm probably going to try and make my own conditioner because it's just literally minerals, oil, and beeswax. So we'll give that a try sometime. So that's going to be the final steps. I'll show you what they look like when I put them in. This is what I am replacing those top boards to the left and the right of the stove. Now it looks like there's a gap in the back there. That gap actually wasn't there before. That's part of my deconstruction. I had to rip out a board to get the new butcher block boards in. So here they come. And there they are with the new butcher block tops in. I'm not quite sure how that goes. It matches with the brick, but we will see. They slid in really nice, fit well. There is a slight little gap, and you can be able to see it. A slight little gap with the middle of the wall on each one. That's because my blocks are perfectly square, and of course, the wall is not. So that's what they look like. Again, they are made from cherry maple with just a couple of strips of walnut in there, and walnut's that dark, dark, dark stuff. Well, that's how they look. Now to make full-size countertops.